So I'm going to talk about uh, gauge origami. I apologize, this title is probably would be more appropriate for Kinawa conference than for Beijing conference, but uh, that's, that's life. So uh, I'll start by um, reminding some of the notions I spoke about two years ago with strings at Princeton. A lot of things has changed since then. Uh, for example, Douglas at that time meant Mike and Stanford was just the university. And uh, so I assume some of you have forgotten uh, the non-perturbative Nelson Schwinger equations and novel symmetries of quantum field theory. So let's start with the ordinary Dyson Schwinger equations, which follow from the invariance of path integral under their uh, small deformations of the contour or small changes of uh, variables under the sign of the integral, which lead to the quantum equations of motion, where the uh, insertion of the uh, classical equations of motion viewed as an operator in some correlation function can be expressed as the correlation function of, of fewer operators. And uh, so if you're lucky, if you chose nice obs uh, observables and perhaps in some limit, these equations can close and for, so can form a system you, of equations you can study. For example, in gauge theory, uh, in, let's say in large end gauge theory, uh, the Wilson loop observables, normalized Wilson loop observables uh, uh, in the fundamental representation, uh, sorry, yes, in, uh, in the truth limit, form a system of equation which looks like a closed system of equation in the loop space, some, some kind of Laplacian uh, applied to the solution loop is equal to the distribution of loop space supported on the loops which, which split into two loops where you have a product of such operators. And uh, in the toy model of gauge theory, the matrix, matrix model, just matrix integral, a more familiar, I mean, better studied case because here it's uh, essentially soluble. Instead of the Wilson loop, you use the resolvent of the matrix, trace of one over x minus phi. Phi is the matrix you are integrating over, and x is just an auxiliary variable. So uh, this observable as a function of the auxiliary variable x uh, has singularities, has poles uh, at the positions of the eigenvalues of, of the uh, matrix. But uh, if you um, take the sum of the expectation value of this observable and the derivative of the potential and take a square, then uh, the Dyson Schwinger equations of the matrix model, also known as loop equations, state that the square of this. Uh, function is actually a polynomial in X, has no singularities. So uh, in more realistic quantum field theories, in addition to the integration, we also have uh, summation of various topological sectors, uh, over instanton sectors, for example, in gauge theory. And so uh, I would like to study the uh, generalization of the dyson schwinger equations which would follow from the sort of large deformations of the path integral contour where you would shift the, uh, the contour of integration of the gauge fields with the, with instantons in the instanton sector N by a, sort of a small, almost everywhere a small deformation which will nevertheless take you into the sector with different topology. So you would like graft into your given uh, gauge field configuration, almost a point, small, small size instanton. And so you will land in a different instanton sector. And hopefully by comparing the path integrals on these two sectors, you can derive new identities between, between correlation functions. So this sounds vague and almost impossible because after all, the changing the topology is not a, a small thing. So why would the uh, path integral measure be uh, comparable in different instanton sectors? Nevertheless, the experience shows that it is possible to compare, and the explicit realization of this idea was found in the context of n equals two supersymmetric uh, four-dimensional gauge theories and two-dimensional signal models, and also in higher dimensions with, uh, with the same supersymmetry, same amount of supersymmetry. 
So we'll start with the choice of observables for, uh, um, for these equations, for these generalization of density schmidt equations. So in four-dimensional n equals two gauge theory, there is a scalar phi in the vector multiplet. So uh, it's a complex uh, field in the joint representation. And the naive observable, which, uh, which is sort of analogous to the uh, re resolvent in the matrix model case, would be the characteristic polynomial. So the product of uh, x minus the eigenvalues of this uh, matrix phi, where x is, again, an auxiliary variable. Uh, so this is a naive definition. Uh, more precisely, you define this observable as a uh, exponential of this generating function of all single trace operators. And so if phi uh, were phi uh, fine dimensional n by n metrics, then the products of these traces would obey certain identities, identities which would guarantee that this uh, exponential of this infinite sum will actually be a polynomial. But in fact, it turns out that because of the mixing of uh, this field phi with Greenus, and because of the fact that in instantal backgrounds, Greenus have zero modes, these algebraic identities, algebraic relations between traces uh, receive corrections. And so this uh, sum is, doesn't sum up exactly to a polynomial. In fact, uh, this expression requires poles in the variable x. And uh, the larger the number, uh, the more poles it has. And uh, analogously, if you have several gauge factors, uh, several UN factors, uh, then you will define several such observables, and they will be, all get poles in the instant on backgrounds. And surprising, surprisingly, the, the claim is that for, uh, at least for quiver gauge theories, there exists a way to correct uh, this observable y by adding extra terms, also uh, given in terms of y, uh, with arguments shifted by linear combinations of uh, masses of fields in the bifundamental representations and with coefficients which depend on the masses of fundamental uh, hypermultiplets and of gauge couplings, such that the expectation value of this corrected y observable is actually a polynomial in x. So all poles will cancel. And uh, as I said, these coefficients depend on gauge couplings. So in fact, in fact these uh, corrections, they sort of account the uh, they come from the um, uh, contributions. So if, you, if you, sorry, so if you look at this expectation value and try to see how come the poles got canceled, they, they, ca they get canceled by the contributions of different instanton sectors. So the pole in instanton sector N is, con is, is canceled by, by another pole which comes from instanton sector N plus one and so on and so forth. Uh, so such expressions which start with y and then are corrected, we call the fundamental gauge characters for, for the reasons which uh, will be clear later. And so these fundamental gauge characters are the four-dimensional analogs of the matrix models expression where you uh, took the square of this function. So the fact that you take a square is, uh, has to do with certain vial symmetry just like the characters have to do with the vial symmetry. And so these are not the, uh, all such possible, possible expressions. You can actually form more complicated expressions where you take the products of these things and also correct them. And they all have the, uh, the main feature is that the expectation values have no poles as the functions of the auxiliary variable x. Now this claim that there are no poles uh, they, you can translate this into the uh, Xavier Putin geometry of the low energy effective theory. And uh, if your theory is subject to the so called omega deformation, then these uh, characters become, these expressions, they uh, also get deformed by the parameters of omega deformations. And then uh, these gauge characters are called the QQ characters in this case. So the simplest example of such a correction term, such an expression, in the, in the SUN gauge theory with 2N fundamental hypermultiplets, 
So I know that Nietzsche is here, so I'm not calling this UN gauge theory. Uh, this, this simplest uh, fundamental character, QQ character, is a sum of two terms. So first you have this Y expression uh, whose argument is shifted by some parameters of omega deformation. And so that will have poles in each instant on sector. And then there is a term which, has, which carries exactly one unit of instant on amplitude and product of, uh, uh, of all fundamental masses. So you have two n uh, such terms. And then one over y. And so this expression will have zeros in the, in, in the instant on sectors with one lo uh, lower instant on charge. And this can, uh, they, they will cancel this pose. So, uh, so this is where, where, where the introduction stops. Now, the main topic of this talk is to explain the origin of these expressions. So where, where do these, so originally they were obtained by brute force, but uh, it turns out that there is a systematic procedure for, for getting them, uh, for obtaining them. So in fact, these QQ characters and the gauge characters are partition functions of a point-like defect in gauge theory. So it's, it's, uh, it's a local operator, which is a partition function of a defect, uh, which sits at a point in space-time. And this defect can be engineering using intersecting uh, brains. So uh, imagine we are living in the brain world scenario where uh, the standard model is confined to, to some brain or a stack of brains, and gravity propagates in the bulk. And uh, uh, it could be that in addition to the stack of brains on which our theory lives, so which we call, can call a physical stack of brains, there could be other brains in the, in the floating, floating around. And these other brains could intersect our stack of brains or could be nearby. And these intersections would, be, uh, would exhibit themselves as defects in our uh, world volume. Uh, or it could be, so these defects could be of point-like nature or they could be uh, sp spread over surfaces or uh, lines and so on and so forth. So, uh, for example, we can uh, we imagine having st three stacks of brains, uh, each, each stack of brains uh, spanning four-dimensional space. Some of these spaces will be Euclidean. And so the, the, the observer who lives on one of these uh, stacks of brains, let's say brain one, two, will observe two defects, two surface defects, which intersect uh, at the point, and the point-like defect. And uh, you can actually preserve quite a, well, you can preserve 0 to supersymmetry in two dimensions by uh, combining up to six stacks of uh, D5 brains and anti D5s, which will intersect along a two-dimensional Minkowski space, and then uh, share various degrees of intersections along the two-dimensional or zero-dimensional times R11 subspaces. So this picture is kind of difficult to read. I tried to uh, squeeze all six four-dimensional spaces into, onto the two-dimensional slide, which is impossible. But uh, there are better pictures which I will present immediately. So we just should remember that for each stack of brains spanning its own four-dimensional space, or four-dimensional or six-dimensional, um, there is a Chan pattern space, which I will call N A B. And so A and B are a pair of indices, each chosen from one to four. Um, and so this is where the so each each uh, world each uh, C2 A B will span some gauge theory locally, some UN uh, N A B gauge theory, but these theories will talk to each other via uh, defects, which they share. So the better picture to try to fit all, all possibilities on, onto a plane is to so represent each uh, complex line by, a, by, by, a, by an axis. And then if there is a stack of brains which, which uh, spans two of these uh, two complex dimensions, I will put a little blob at the corner. So here is the picture for the usual four-dimensional n equals four theory which lives in the space uh, C2 with coordinates 1, 2. And it's a U and 1, 2 gauge theory. And now we add another theory. Sorry. Now we add another UN theory, which will uh, live in a um, 
space uh, C2 with coordinates 2 and 3, and these two theories share one complex line. So these two n equals 4 theories will interact through some two-dimensional uh, defect theory. And you can continue. So add one more theory, and 4, and 5, and 6. Oops. That's, uh, <laughs> that's too much. It's a very sensitive thing. OK. Um, right. Uh, so, uh, so this picture, which I start with, with, with three stacks of brains intersecting in, uh, uh, in C3, will correspond to this picture in this, uh, this way. So the idea is now, suppose you, by somehow you manage to integrate out all degrees of freedom on all stacks of brains except for one. Then you, you will generate some interaction in your uh, original theory or in physical theory, which will be either localized at a point or uh, spread uh, as a surface defect. OK. And so uh, one integrates the degrees of freedom using supersymmetry and localization. These stacks were chosen carefully so as to preserve some fraction of supersymmetry. And so one could use exact com supersymmetric computations to, to evaluate uh, these integrals. And, uh, so one feature of this integration is that you can represent the degrees of freedom which are associated to instantons. So the instantons are actually shared by all the stacks of brains. And, and the instantons are free to travel from one stack to another. And that's actually the explanation why such transitions, which, are, which seem quite unnatural from the point of view of the uh, gauge theory on a single copy of four-dimensional space-time, why are they become possible when you take this whole picture into consideration. So what, what seems to be two different instantons sectors to our observer living in our space are actually uh, belong to the same instanton sector in the, in, the, in, the, in, this, in the theory with two, two stacks of brains where just one instanton went to another stack. And so there's a mathematical description of this uh, uh, set of uh, space of such instantons which involves uh, certain uh, matrices which generalize ADHM uh, uh, constructions. So on each two-dimensional plane, you will have the uh, data of the usual EGM construction of instantons in four dimensions with two square matrices and two rectangular matrices. But altogether, you have four square complex matrices and uh, six pairs of rectangular matrices. And they uh, solve interesting uh, equations, which I will uh, write very briefly. So uh, in the ordinary uh, four-dimensional gauge theory in describing instantons uh, of UN gauge group, you set this combination of quadratic matrices and rectangular matrices to zero. And in this story, where, six, where, uh, where you have up to six stacks of uh, brains, you uh, impose uh, um, seven equations in total for uh, eight uh, Hermitian square matrices. Uh, which together with the UK uh, symmetry action precisely elim eliminate all, all these deg degrees of freedom in quadratic matrices. And then there are additional equations which, which are not familiar in the usual addition construction, which tell you that the B matrices of one set of brains should basically annihilate the I and J matrices from another st set of brains. And then there are some cross equations which uh, come from integrating out the open strings which connect uh, uh, high dimensional brains. So with all these equations, you get some modular space over which uh, you integrate. And that produces a partition function, which uh, becomes a kind of statistical mechanical model, which is of interest of its own. And uh, the partition function of the statistical mechanical model is the partition function of what I call the gauge origami, which is also the partition function of this uh, union of gauge theories. And the main claim is that as a function of Coulomb parameters, which physically are the separations of these stacks of brains in the, in the remaining transverse two dimensions, the, uh, this partition function has no singularities. And, uh, so is it, and the fact that the partition function has no singularities, by expanding it 
in the powers of the, of the Coulomb parameters and setting to zero the coefficients in all negative powers, you get a bunch of identities, which are the non-perturbative dyson schwinger equations. And as an application, you can derive uh, all known statements of the BPS CFT correspondence that, uh, in part, that the, for the A-type quiver gauge theories, with or without defects, uh, the, the partition functions obey the uh, BPZ or KZ type equations of conformal blocks of two-dimensional conformal field theories. And uh, uh, now with, this, um, with the presence of these uh, stacks of brains which intersect along two-dimensional surfaces, also super conformal field theories. So you can realize not only Kasmudi algebras, let's say, but also super Kasmudis. And there, I'm sure there are more applications to follow. Thank you for your attention. Directly, but I think uh, trying to, so if you so each of these theories individually uh, without our other brains, these are n equals two star gauge theories. Uh, what I forgot to mention, maybe I mentioned on some slides, there are also uh, you can also do orbifolds, so you can generate all possible quiver theories we know of by these constructions, and so these theories, are, of course, can be geometrically engineered by topological strings on local Calabi-Yau's. But now combining these theories so that they intersect along different uh, uh, surfaces or points sounds like an exciting possibility of doing something with topological strings, where you have a, topologi have a study topological string on a singular Calabi Yau, or maybe not even Calabi Yau, the singular space, which is Calabi Yau as a whole, but the local pieces uh, uh, are, for example, Fano varieties, so that you have uh, the top, deg top degree form has poles, but these poles on di uh, uh, have uh, opposite residues, so different components. So we normally don't study topological strings on such manifolds, but, uh, but uh, this picture suggests that we should. Uh, and another slight obstruction to doing this in a strictly speaking topological string is that here, to make things interesting, I usually, uh, so uh, there are four omega deformation parameters here, which sum up to zero. And if you insist that two of them sum to zero, things become kind of two rather singular. So it should be the refined topological string. Uh, I don't really understand what it is. So. <laughs> <laughs>